It's the Positively Petland Show on 800 KXIC in studio. Ron Solzrud, co-owner of Petland of Iowa City. Ron, happy 2019 to you. And same to you, Jerry. Thank you. What is uh, going on with the store today? Today we're going to talk about the Yorkshire Terrier. We're going to go through those dog resolutions and then the Founders Blend or Natural Heartland Naturals Founders Blend dog food. Um, at the store, we've got all sorts of here. What do we have going on? Um, jackets are still left. Boots. We, you know what? I don't even know why I'm talking about this anymore. We have not had a cold <laughs> winter. Uh, Koi came up to me this week and said, maybe we need to put them on sale. I go, no, as soon as we get a cold snap, we're going to sell out because we're already sold through a lot of the inventory, but right. he's already looking, hey, it's January. We need to sell out on our winter stuff and bring in the spring stuff kind of a thing. So I don't know what to tell you guys. Uh, come in and buy toys. That's the probably the best thing as far as what should I do with my dog? Because I think everybody's playing with their dog outside a lot more mm -hmm. this winter than anything, any in the past. So We've got a little bit of a warm one going. I don't know but if we're going to get it on the tail end, though. Those leashes and those leads that are ragged and they might be broken. I mean, uh, you just don't need jackets, but there's uh, plenty at Petland of Iowa City. I had a lead. I had a we had a puppy or we still have that puppy and it's my daughter's. And we were having to use the lead as to control the puppy in the house. So it, he was on the lead to keep him close to us so he wouldn't sneak away. Well, he started biting it. And so we were replacing them. Well, I didn't replace one soon enough. I was outside with little fits. The lead was must have been just down to the last thread. I'm in my jammies, and I'm talking. This is back in uh, fall, so I have short little shorts, you know, little flannel shorts, and a uh, probably a little t-shirt or something. Then the, the uh, lead uh, let go, snapped. Ooh. What do you do? Yeah, what do it's you a, do? It was, you know, this is a little puppy. It's going to run. I was running up and down the block in my little shorts. It was a sight to be seen, I'll say for sure. I just imagine a scene for, out of the movie Old School with Will Ferrell. You it's, running down the street in your oh, yes. skivvies. I hope nobody got that one on video. Because then, then Fitz was doing the same. That's really common thing that dogs do. As you approach him. It runs away. Well, at first it stares at you. Yes. Taunts you, <laughs> says, come get me. No, 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 no. <laughs> you get close. Then runs away. Oh, he would get, let me get like within two feet. And then he is a bolt. So it's just like, whoosh. Um, got Susie out there. If anybody knows this show, Susie's my sassy little Maltese poodle. Actually released her. I normally don't do that. But I'm like, I got to do something. So Susie was corralling fits, which I was like, okay, thanks. I did find out as soon as I stopped moving forward and then just turned around and walking backwards, Fitz started following me. <laughs> and, and then I went up to the doorbell, rang it, and Wendy uh, answered the, the front door. And she goes, what are you doing out there? <laughs> It was just really classic, good story kind of a thing. That's that's yeah. what life is with a pet. Yes. Fitz ran right in then, and life was beautiful once again. So, All right. Breed of the week. Let's do it. <clears throat> it is the Yorkshire Terrier. So the Yorkshire... Oh, I'm at the uh, Petland Iowa City website. So if you want to learn about a lot of different breeds, go to PetlandIowaCity.com. Um, at the top, there's all about breeds. And then you're going to get some nice short snippets of breeds to real quickly find out, you know, hey, is this down my line and all that? And I always like to ask the question, is this the right breed for you? So from uh, the Petland Iowa City website, Yorkshire Terrier, Yorkshire Terrier puppies, affectionately known as Yorkies, offer big personalities in a small package. These are one of those smaller breeds. Though members of the toy group, they are terriers by nature and are brave, determined, investigative, and energetic. They have long, luxurious blue and tan coats. And because of that, they are non-shedding or low shedding, I would would preface this portable pooch is one of the most popular breeds according to the akc registration statistics um yorkshire terriers if you don't know this they start off mainly black with some tan highlights on the paws and stuff but then 
Usually by eight weeks, you can already go to the base of the roots and you're going to notice that there is a grayness coming out. So the it turns gray fairly quickly as it, it's growing older. Within its first year, it's totally gray. Um, history, named for the English city from which they originally hail. Yorkshire Terriers were used in the 19th century to catch what? Chipmunks. Rats and other small rodents. In clothing mill, in clothing mills, uh, they also did uh, a lot of that. Do you realize how hard I tried to give the wrong answer? I know exactly what you're doing, and and love it every single time. I, I look forward to the wrong answer. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, it, it in, in its beginnings, the Yorkie belonged to the working class. I think this is one of those really cool stories, especially the weavers from the clothing mills. In fact, fictitious comments. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying it. Fictitious? F-A-C-E-T-I-O-U-S. Fictitious. Comments were often made about how the dog's fine, silky coats were the ultimate product of the looms. Eventually, the breed left the workforce and became a companion animal to families of the European high society. Isn't that funny? They took it. That's, that happens in so many different ways. Foods. What used to be, no, I'm not eating it, we'll make them eat it, then becomes a delicatessen. Uh, Temperature, or temperature. you can say delicatessen, but you can't say fictitious. No, it did. Uh, <laughs> when I looked at the word, it's facetious. <laughs> no. uh, temperament uh, of a Yorkie. That's uh, your engineering mind. It is definitely. <laughs> Yorkies are easily adaptable to all surroundings, and because of that, they travel well. And I would totally go on this. Small dogs travel very well and very easy. Make suitable pets for many homes. Due to their small size, they require limited exercise. They literally get all their exercise, can, in the house, but need daily interaction with their people. That's to keep them social. And especially, it's, it's good to keep a Yorkie social to multiple people, or they get to be that yippy, barky kind of dog that only wants to be around the one person, and if anybody else comes in. So socializing, and this would be true with most all dogs, but Yorkies are definitely in that. Um, so keeping them social is key. The long coat requires regular brushing, or if you're like me, I go, I would go and get them uh, cut shorter so it's a little easier to maintain. The Yorkie does better around older children that won't pull or yank on them. Hmm. I think that would be true for all dogs, too. They tend to bond with one person, like I said. Therefore, extra socialization is needed in a family environment. Um, general appearance, that of a long-haired toy terrier whose blue and tan coat is parted on the face and from base of the skull to the end of the tail. This is just saying it's got long hair, and it actually does part as a result. The body is neat, compact, and well-proportioned. The dog's high head, carriage, and confident manners should give the appearance of vigor and self-importance. Grooming is recommended every six weeks. And that's about when I would do it. I just, I think for me, I just keep them a tighter cut. The most popular haircut for the Yorkie is called the puppy cut. Where most of us get our, you know, that's. That's the tr traditional cut. Cut for most dogs. Yeah. But I, but I, from what they're saying is, is that originated from the Yorkie. So that's the Yorkshire Terrier. Um, I've played with them a lot. I've known owners of Yorkshire Terriers, the ones that were single and they really secluded their, their Yorkie. Those are the ones that everybody goes, Oh, it's a yikey, you know, yipey bitey dog. That does not have to be the case. If you socialize your dog, if you have kids, you're going to have a, a very well socialized dog, very playful. I love it because it's, a good amount of energy in a very small package, uh, that's still kind of easy. It's when you get a big dog with a lot of energy that you go, whoa, hold on here. This is a, a whole nother or, or, you know, deal as far as energy level. So it's nice to have a small, small dog with a lot of energy because they're just real playful. So and I have a friend who has, I think it's a golden retriever and it's in an apartment all day long. And about nine o'clock at night, I'm, out doing my different stuff and whatnot and every single night i see this dog just absolutely rampaging off the leash terror i mean just running i mean absolutely sprinting so having a big dog you got to make sure that you get uh, plenty of exercise in and get some of that energy out during the day but um yeah yorkie i like yorkies they're fun oh so it is the right breed for you i don't know if it is or not well i i, I like all breeds so what else is going on? All right. So we're going to get into, we were talking about 
New Year's resolutions for your dog. And last week we went through what pulling, digging, um, how to like dogs, like when you go for the walk, right before you go for the walk, uh, they're crazy. Uh, how do you stop that kind of a thing? Uh, so we'll continue on that path and I'm going to get to some, uh, did we cover begging at the table? I can't remember yeah. that one. That was okay. the last one we wrapped up with. And we did do pulling, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then let's, oh, here we go. My dog has this nasty habit of, you're, not mine. Smoking. Smoke, you know, that would be, you'd have to get that one on video and then you stop that one. Um, urinating in the same spot in my house or oh. urinating in the area, you know, a certain area. Um, right now, we actually have an interesting situation. We have, how many dogs in our house? Last night we had three. No. Six. We had six dogs Jeez. in our house yesterday. I don't think I've ever had six dogs. In That's house. working. So we had the two little puppies we have on air right now. We have a, a Frenchie, a little cream Frenchie. And then we also have a Huskimo, which is a Husky Eskimo. That's in the studio. So they were at my house yesterday. We have our two dogs. Uh, Susie and Callie, we have Fitz, my daughter's dog, and then our friend is over. That's the first large breed that's ever been in our house. It's uh, Maddie is a uh, lab mix. What we're finding is, is uh, we can't keep track of all those dogs. So every two hours, as far as their potty needs, so every two hours, everybody's got to go out because they've been urinating on our carpeting and they keep on going to the same spot. What What is happening right there? A dog had an accident, and it could have been Callie, our oldest dog, who's a little senile, and she just kind of drops trowel and goes if she has to go. She's kind of that older uh, uh, person that just says, I do what I want when I want, you know, kind of a thing. For the most part, Callie is still a really great dog, but she has her senior moments, as we say. What happens when they urinate uh, outside or inside the house is the same. You know, ever notice when you go by a fire hydrant? Your dog gets really curious about the smell around there. Somebody gave a scent there, and I call it the permission to pee. So they smell, they get excited about urinating, and they want to urinate right away. So it's the permission to pee. Um, same thing happens in your house. Uh, if a dog urinates in your house, you have to clean it up in a special way so that you remove that permission to pee from that area. That, per that easy way to do that is with a stain and odor remover with an enzyme in it that's the key it's all about the enzymes it's all about the enzyme the enzyme is the actual thing that's mm -hmm. doing the work on the urine to remove that permission to pee if you don't use that if you use chlorine or soap it doesn't work so you got to use that enzyme product on there so we have at our own store i think three different brands of it they all do exactly the same thing we even have a petland brand discounted Petland brand, you know, everything. It does exactly the same as the leading brand that's out there. It has an enzyme in it. We all use the same enzyme. The enzyme goes after that permission to pee, breaks it all up so that they don't do it. It's really remarkable. You do have to glug it on the area because you might see a couple inch, you know, kind of stainish area or a wet area where they urinated. Know that that padding sucked it up and distributed it probably to about a foot. Um, and that's the urine area underneath. That dog can smell that urine all the way from, uh, you know, above the carpet. So you got to get a glug glug of the stain and odor with the enzyme in it, a uh, product all over that so that they it gets rid of that smell. If you find your dog still comes back to it, you just didn't put enough on. Put okay, more on. next. Stealing food off the counter. How do you handle that one? All, all of these, there's, there was a com, um, mainly common theme. Watch your dog's behavior and try to work with the behavior. If, you're, you know, if your dog is a puller, uh, when you walk, don't walk when your dog pulls kind of a thing. If your dog eats off the counters, hmm, what should you do? Jerry? Are you asking me? Yeah. Smack its nose and tell him to knock it off. <laughs> And that, and you know what? That doesn't work. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> so what's the right thing See, to do you? wrong? You got to remove it. So with all of these that we've been talking about, you got to remove whatever the issue is. And in this case, take the, oh, we got a little bit of a brawl going on. 
um, in the studio here. Jerry, stop that. <laughs> um, you got to remove the food from it. You, that's one of the consequences of a larger breed. They can counter surf. So I have all small breeds. And uh, so I don't even worry about what's on the counter. Uh, cats, though, you do have to worry about what's on the counter because they'll jump up on it. Um, larger dogs, though, if you put food on the counter and leave it, and Jerry's got wonderful stories of how the food disappeared. It's, they'll go up there and, and get it when you're there and when you're not there. Um, I will say the large breed we have in our house, uh, Mary Beth is an awesome trainer because uh, Maddie does not counter surf. We had plenty of food on those counters. Um, you could tell she commanded the room, though, too, because Mary Beth, when she was in the room and Maddie was in the room and Maddie got the inkling, the look of getting up on the counter uh, and counter surfing, uh, Mary Beth had a, a vocal. She's an Italian, so she got the vocal level up a little higher. And Maddie was definitely uh, listening to what Mary Beth said. So you got to train them not to. But the best thing, just remove the food. You, you'll you'll learn how to work with not leaving the kitchen with food on the table. So that's um, the last one that I have for New Year's resolutions for your dog. What about food? Let's talk about food. So today we're gonna we're gonna use Petlands Heartland Naturals. It's called Founders Blend. Um, it's both in small bites and large bites. Um, it, it's a great food. Um, Petland has been uh, doing this, doing what we do for. I don't know. It's like 70 years. Um, we've seen the dog foods come and go. We've seen what people like. We've seen what, what dogs thrive on and all that kind of stuff. And we worked with veterinarians on putting together, you know, what is the best blends and all that kind of stuff. And so they came up with this and we now feed all of our puppies in our store, this food. Um, I feed all of my dogs, this food and any dog that comes to my house gets this food. So just looking through the, the different things that you can see on a bag. Bags today are pretty good with telling you what's going on within it. Um, they do play the game. Uh, so let's read the guaranteed analysis. Crude protein is at 26%. Crude fat is at 16%. That is a great area to be in for your dog. If your dog is a highly energetic dog and is really skinny, you're probably going to go up on the proteins more in the 30s. <clears throat> if you go with a product called Origin, you're going to probably go into the 40s. And that's just to keep muscle mass and all that kind of stuff going. Uh, crude fiber is on, on the 4%, uh, which is a that's what you're using to keep those hard stools uh, for your dog. Then let's go with ingredients. It's always like a, a good thing to go, well, what's the first ingredient, couple, few, or whatever ingredients? So chicken on this one is the first ingredient. And then chicken meal. Jerry, why would they put chicken as the first ingredient and then chicken meal as the second ingredient? That sounds redundant. Um, because they're two different things. They are two different things. And the real simple way and, and really tells the story if they just have the meat source chicken, that means it's called wet weight before it's cooked. If it says chicken meal, that's after it's cooked. So there is what a 300%. Oh, I forget how they, they point it. The, there is a lot of water in chicken, mm -hmm. you know, and all that. After you cook it, it, it gets reduced to about a third in its weight. So, if you see the word chicken, that's wet wheat, wet weight, but that includes the water before it was cooked. Chicken meal, if you see that high on the list, that's actually better because that's after it was cooked and it's still high on the list. So the first two ingredients are chicken, chicken and chicken meal. Then comes brown rice. So now we're into the carbohydrates. It is a, a false assumption that dogs don't eat grains. Uh, they actually do eat grains. I think where it came from, though, is that dog foods, uh, like what you see in the grocery stores, went way in one direction, and pretty much everything they had in there was grain-based. Even all their protein was grain-based. And so that just went off the, the side, you know, the, the wheels came off that cart, and so everybody started pushing back and saying, hey, dogs don't eat grain. That would be false. They actually do eat grains, and they can metabolize them as well. So uh, brown rice... <laughs> Jerry, stop that. Um, oatmeal, ground rice, chicken fat. Uh, so it's got a lot of good products in here. Some things that um, are a little more controversial, dried uh, bee pulp. People think that, hey, if you know 
uh, you can actually get sugar out of beets. And so beets are known to be high in sugar. If you see dried beet pulp, that means the sugar has been extracted. So that why is that in there? That's actually contributing to the fiber, which makes the stools hard and all that kind of stuff like we want it. Do I have how much time do I have left? Uh, like 10 seconds. Okay. Oh, shoot. Okay. So there's more to cover on all these foods and we'll never get through them all. Um, this would be a, a really high level product as far as what your dog would uh, need. It's not a prescription diet or anything to that nature. Um, if your dog was really, really high energy, a hunting dog and all that kind of stuff, I probably would go with something that's a little higher in protein. So there that it is. is Petland Heartland's Founders Blend. Positively Petland Show, Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock on Iowa City's News and Sports Station 800 KXIC. Don't you ever wonder when those dogs get into those little spats? They're little spats. They're not actually fighting. Mean, no, they'd be It's like a half them, play, right. like... Get away from me. Yeah. Don't you ever wonder what's going through their head going, what actually caused it? Right. Well, well, if you watch it, it's like one sitting on the other. Or I think a lot of times their leg like is in one position and it falls asleep. Or, I, this is what I right. imagine. And then it goes, hey, what are you doing? You know, and I would it, just love to be able to figure out what's in the dog's head when they get into those. But if you heard that in the background, would. that's that's. They're just having fun. That's child's play right there. Ron, how do we find out more about you? We're Petland of Iowa City, located at the Marketplace Mall, across the street from Marketplace Mall, Joanne's Fabric, the movie theater. Eastside Iowa City. Yes. Uh, our hours of operation, Sunday, we are open from noon until 6. All other days, we're open from 10 a.m. until 9 p.m. Uh, come in, take advantage of our buy 10, get one free. We track it for you, dog and cat food. Uh, that is a free bag. Streamers fall down and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty cool when it happens. Are you open uh, on Valentine's Day? We are open on Valentine's Day. That is a neat time frame. I love it. The high schoolers come in and they'll uh, have dates and stuff and play with puppies during the Valentine's Day period. I think that is so cute. It is why Wendy and I bought the pet store. We remembered when we were in high school and in college, we'd go visit pet stores, and we just thought that was so romantic. February 14th is on a Thursday, so we'll probably be doing the show that day. Oh. I think you need to bring something special in for me. Positively <laughs> Petland Show, thanks for joining us right here on Thank Iowa you. City's News and Sports Station, 800 KXIC. Happy Sunday.